Hey guys, welcome to this new tutorial. Um, so in this tutorial I'm going to be showing a quick way of doing an isosurface in Softimage and then how to take it into ZBrush and do some um, quick transformations to that. Um, so first things, uh, it's going to just switch to ice if you're not in ice uh, tab. And we're going to create a um, primitive polygon mesh and a cube. And this cube is going to be um, a representation of the container, right? So we're going to just stretch it on, maybe do it um, something like this, right? So it's a bit, uh, it has some depth to it, but it's just kind of a flat plane, right? Um, so we have this container now. We can close this and we're going to go into particles, create basic emission. And if you click here in the ice tab, you'll see, and we select our object here. Oops. There we go. So we're going to update the ice tree of our point cloud here. There we go. So we have our point cloud and if we press play we see that this point cloud is actually emitting out of this object, right? So that's not necessarily what we want. We want to just use this guy as a container and basically the particles are going to be just static. Uh, so we can reduce some of these components. We don't need all this stuff, right? So here in basic emission we want to say um, first set to volume, not to surface, because it's emitting just for the edges of the... and then we're going to say number of particles per second, we're going to say total number of particles. So let's see what we get there. So in that way we just end up with the volume and the particles just stuck inside. Right, the number here, it's um, it's quite important, right, because uh, we might need many more particles than that. Uh, so that's looking a bit better, right? Um, <clears throat> so we're going to close this now. I mean, we can just come back to this, but like for a second, we're going to just come back here. And um, we have this kind of point cloud in this container. And what we're going to do here is model. Um, polygon mesh and we're gonna go to polygonizer. I mean I don't have the second polygonizer, there's a really good plugin by EM um, a series of plugins uh, and one of them is the EM polygonizer. Uh, it's really uh, really good but I don't have it installed in this version so we're gonna go in with the normal polygonizer and see how that works. So you see I press polygonizer to the particles and I don't get anything at this point. So we're gonna start tweaking some of these numbers. So let's say uh, the ISO level, we're going to leave it like that. Maybe increase the detail to 5. Let's see, 10. And when we just go to 10, you see that you can just go beyond the slider, right? Uh, we start seeing something, and this is the ISO surface is being calculated for you. That's the polygonizer, right? So we'd say 12. And be careful with this number. You don't want to put 30, because that's going to be the resolution of the ISO surface, right? So if we go here into shaded mode, um, and we maybe hide the cube, right? We can go back to the polygonizer. Um, here, there we go. That's the polygonizer's attributes. So here we can actually start. Uh, decreasing the ISO level and you see we start getting a bit more volume of those particles and we can go to 2 um, and there we go. I mean this workflow I kind of just started with and did it because I wanted to kind of create uh, something that would start with an isosurface, but then it doesn't look like an isosurface. I mean, I was a bit, as many people out there, I guess, uh, tired of the way isosurfaces look. So, and like everything seems to be kind of falling into the same um, 
into the same aesthetics just because the isosurface is kind of such a kind of a strong algorithm that kind of creates a very specific kind of look to things. Um, so we're going to start with the isosurface. The cool thing about this isosurface is that it's a volumetric kind of um, mesh, right? So we have this kind of very th thick mesh. Uh, we could start with this. I mean, actually, it doesn't look bad. Um, it's actually quite nice that it has, it's quite porous, right? And you can see the particles as spheres, but we're going to just try to get rid of that um, by painting on it in ZBrush. So let's go ahead and close this here. So there we go. This is our isosurface. So you see that you can play with um, a bunch of parameters there. Actually, I mean, I'm feeling that maybe we need to connect them a bit more, right? So we could say zero five. And you can go high in resolution. I mean, ZBrush can definitely handle it. Right? So if we just expand that, we can switch to hidden line removal. And we get some nice. Um, isosurface visualization, right? You can also turn things like here, there's kind of display options and you can play with uh, something like fog that really makes, you know, soft image kind of a really nice way of visualizing things. Um, and you can play with the color of this fog and range and, and so on. A bunch of cool things that you can do. But still, um, let's uh, go ahead and export it. So file export to an OBJ. And now we're going to just go, I'm just going to put it in the desktop. Um, users who say desktop. So let's call it ISO, right? Just something simple. And we're going to export it. It's quite a heavy mesh at this point. Um, while we wait for that to kind of export, we're going to just um, go to ZBrush, open ZBrush. Um, and if you're new to ZBrush, you really want to do some introduction tutorials because at the beginning it might be a bit hunt, like difficult. Um, I could give you a very quick introduction. You just want to get rid of this light box at the beginning. Um, and let's make sure that we have this exporting. I don't know why it's taking so long. Oh, there we go. So we're in ZBrush. Uh, don't press anything in ZBrush. Just go here to import, right? And I know that you're going to have a document and so on, but Mainly we're going to go into the desktop and then ISO. You see we created a 151 megabyte mesh. So once we import that, you see that it's going to be loaded here. We can actually click and drag, left click and drag into the canvas. And if you press shift while you're doing that, you're going to just kind of like toggle the ortho mode. So you're going to have this ISO surface uh, here in ZBrush. So there we go. Now, before you even press anything, and if you did, just you're going to have to start over, uh, but press edit here, which is going to allow us to kind of interact with this object in um, 3D. Otherwise, you're going to stay in a kind of a 2D mode in ZBrush. So you see that we press edit, and now we can actually start interacting with this object in 3D. So um, if you press Alt and left click, you can pan. Uh, if you right click, you can orbit. Remember, you had to play, uh, press edit before. 
and if you press alt and right click you can also pan uh, and control and right click allows you to zoom in and out so right click uh, so we have a bunch of things that we can do with this mesh so the problem with this mesh is that it's um, an isosurface will be created with lots of triangles um, there might be ways of uh, making it into quads but that's for a, such a high resolution mesh we will take forever so I'm not gonna, not gonna do that now so we're gonna go into geometry and click divide and here you see that we're kind of giving it more more definition more smoothness right we're smoothing the mesh you press it again and we're getting to a very high resolution mesh and, and ZBrush can handle that so I mean obviously you think that you're multiplying the number of edges and vertices um, I mean faces um, as you're doing this so when you export it back uh, if you do so it's gonna be very heavy so things that you can do here obviously the normal standard brush uh, allows you to move things around but that doesn't really work for such a mesh because you don't have a surface here you have like a volumetric um, kind of mesh right like it's, um, it's an isosurface so the kind of operations that I would say you you can actually do with this is they're a bit different uh, there's a series of brushes like um, that really um, work well with, with such a mesh so for instance you have something like uh, spiral right so spiral you can see we could start deforming this so we can right click and increase the size of our uh, brush and you see that we can just do a spiral there and then suddenly we just start kind of breaking a little bit the homogeneity of this mesh right so just just slight movements here and there and you see how we're working with a very high resolution mesh you could start getting some really nice effects the thing is the, the cool thing here is just you're starting in ZBrush with something that is unusual which is this isosurface um, um, that has a lot of depth to it so you can just play with the different directions and create this kind of very um, and you see if you look at the isosurface just right away it's very blobby and like metable it's still it's blobby and a bit metable but it, it, it starts you can start adding character to it um, and this should be like a mesh that could be perfectly 3d printed so you can just go a bit extra crazy on the rotation I mean in some point you're gonna start really you know, breaking it so just make sure that you don't overdo it um, you can play with symmetries you can play with a bunch of different techniques so that's one of the brushes that uh, you can definitely work with something like this and, and you're gonna end up with something really porous and again if you use different uh, isosurfaces uh, you will be able to do different things right so the other brush that I use for such operations is the move brush um, if you start doing this kind of with uh, the first the, the spiraling maybe the the move it's not gonna work but if you, you could see that move can allow you to to squeeze or like stretch some areas that you want just to create more tension and maybe you like this area to just be like a bit more dense and some other areas a bit more so again there's a lot of things that you could do especially with brushes that kind of deform the mesh as opposed to just be kind of adding detail to it um, so this is a yeah very specific workflow um, I did the kind of intro um, graphics for plethora projects in Facebook with this so and um, but it's really good for doing some cool 3d prints uh, because this mesh should be kind of absolutely uh, solid uh, well there must be like depending if the isosurface has been done with very kind of um, high iso level you might have some islands and so on but it should be 
uh, quite useful for different techniques. Um, well, that's it. Um, I'll see you guys soon. <laughs>